arrived. I think he noted in his journal that the oysters were small but very sweet to the taste, and that's the same Sydney rock oyster we're growing now. Who doesn't enjoy a plate of freshly shucked oysters? Paired with white wine makes it for one of the best meals. If you have ever been to Australia, you'll know it's the iconic Australian entree. Australians love their oysters, and so does the rest of the world. Oyster farming has grown so much over the years, and it no longer employs the traditional methods used for decades. To increase yield, ensure quality, and make more efficient, farmers today are finding new ways and using new technology. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. Let's get to know the history of oyster farming in Australia. The deliberate cultivation of oysters in Australia began in the 1870s, which makes oyster farming the oldest aquaculture industry in Australia. Oyster middens, found in the Sydney area, have been dated as early as 10,000 BC. For a long time, indigenous Australians have understood just what a delicious and valuable food source oysters are. Today, Australians are coming to the same realization, and this is evident in the growing number of oyster farms in the country. The chair of NSW Farmers Oyster Committee and owner of One Boyan Rock Oysters says that over the past five years, there has been an increase in sales and farm gate prices of up to 7%. She believes that the reason for this is because farmers have become more professional in their approach and are now better educated about sustainable and environmental farming methods. From 2018 to 2019 alone, the oyster industry in New South Wales produced 76 million oysters worth 59 million at the farm gate. In NSW, three species of oysters are grown, namely Sydney Rock Oyster, the Native Flat Oyster, and the Pacific Oyster. The Sydney Rock Oyster accounts for more than 90% of production in the state. The Sydney Rock Oyster is a species that can live out of water for up to three weeks, and that's longer than any oyster variety in the world. This means that Australians get to enjoy fresh, unfrozen products throughout the whole year. Over the last decade, younger farmers have been taking over, and they have a new perspective on farming and how it can be made more viable. Oysters are also known as canaries of the waterway, because they have an excellent indicator of the health of estuaries. Furthermore, oyster farmers are mostly proactive environmentalists too. This is why nowadays there is the emphasis on sustainability of practices without sacrificing the quality of the product. Oyster farming has become smarter in Australia. Oysters are filter animals, and they are highly susceptible to water quality. If a lot of rain floods into the estuary where oysters grow, they quickly pick up contaminants, which can easily make people ill. This is something that regulators and farmers want to avoid at all costs because there is a lot of risk farms would have to close until conditions improve. The problem is, is that farmers have no control over what oysters consume. Farms can be closed for a few weeks or months on end, and this is a big problem. In the past, the industry has largely relied on rainfall to gauge if there is any risk. However, analysis has revealed that almost 30% of closures based on rainfall gauge readings are in fact unnecessary because the quality of the water and the oysters are fine. It's a costly error that can cost a lot of money. Ag tech business The Yield is now working with the Tasmanian government. If you think that oyster farming is something very simple and old school, think again. The industry has gotten a lot smarter and in Australia. Oyster farming is tapping on technology for more reliable yields. They have deployed a system that uses estuary sensors, cloud computing, and machine learning in the pursuit of a much better outcome for oyster farmers in the country. This will help ensure that there will be a steady supply of oysters on the plate of consumers. The yield solution is vital in ensuring that there is food safety, but it has an even greater impact on the community, as well as the economy. Tasmania relies on industries such as oyster farms for local communities. The oyster industry is worth around 23 to 24 million a year. It often influences a more significant share of the state's economic infrastructure. Anything that can be done to help sustainability of oyster farms is vital for the the community and the economy. Scientists are also working on improving hatcheries production of the Sydney Rock Oyster. In the past, oyster farms have always had challenges with production aspects. The hatchery sector for SROs is still in its infancy, and improvements in reliability will significantly improve the continued development of the industry. Scientists in the area have been given CRCP funding to work on a number of areas to improve hatchery production, such as tetraploid techniques, increasing viable gamut storage times, understanding spawn-inducing factors, and improving maturation protocols. Flip Farm is something oyster farmers can look forward to. This technology developed in New Zealand in 2017 is an excellent alternative to soft mesh oyster bags. The pan-pending basket system boasts efficiency in handling, creates a better growing environment for oysters, and also helps reduce the cost of labor. The bag system used by many oyster farms was easily damaged by high winds. Farmers needed an efficient method to allow the bags to be removed easily and stay on the lines. The Hexel Pro Oyster Basket is significantly better than the old system because it allows six baskets to be flipped in a second. The 
speed and efficiency it offers means the number of stashed can be substantially reduced while making their work fast and easy. There's also Smart Oysters. Smart Oysters is a farm management system that was a fruit of many frustrations. Oyster farmer Ewan McCash was looking for a way to remotely manage his farm and at that time, there was nothing for him to use so he built his own system. The real-time GPS-enabled system allows farmers to drop a pin when they're out on the lease. This informs them as to what they have done, where they have done it, and what they need to do next. Launched in 2018, the app can be easily set up according to the need of each individual farm. It's valuable from a farm management point of view because it lets farmers know what is happening in the farm real time. The app is a goldmine of data, which can be used not only for the management of the farm, but also creates value for farmers who like to grow their business. There are plans for the app, and in the future, it will be able to create more value because it will help certify sustainability, access finance, create market differentiation using data, and create a smarter business model. Lost Marine is another innovation that will change oyster farming. Traditionally, oyster farmers kept their oysters in farm water until they were ready to be sold. However, younger farmers are looking to move away from this practice. They are now embracing high-tech live tanks, where oysters can be stored for up to six months, which is a significant improvement where quality is concerned. The founder of Ost Marine is in the refrigeration engineering trade, found himself designing live tank systems for restaurants, as well as live exports. The unique feature of his invention was that the water didn't need changing. This resulted in a zero mortality rate for shellfish, fish, and crustacean. A tidal situation in Tasmania, which threatened to wipe out oyster farms, led him to design a tank for oysters. Now his invention has become a game changer in the oyster industry. SED Water Graders is also something helpful. Developed in 2000 after Tasmanian farmers asked for a way to automate the process of grading oysters, today the SED Vision Grader can grade more than 18,000 market-sized oysters in just an hour. That is something that would have needed about a dozen workers to do manually. The Vision Grader came into fruition when farmers in Australia couldn't get enough workers, and the profitability of farms was also quite low because of labor costs. The system was designed by Matthew Brown, and the first one was sold in July 2003. SED now exports globally, and there is plenty of interest from farmers in Mexico, the US, and Canada. Workers also need not to worry about losing their jobs because farmers will be out doing what they do best, growing oysters instead of grading them. This will result in a significant increase in production levels. If you have the ability to sweat out oysters in a few hours instead of days, you will be able to grow a lot more. Automation is indeed a great thing because it will allow farmers to scale and grow. Have you heard of CPA? Most people know CPA as the Australian basket system. Although there are plenty of other brands, CPA has the predominant market share and has become synonymous with it. CPA is more than just a basket. Farmers were involved in the design of the whole system. The Stormbreaker clips, for example, were the result of an Australian farmer whose clips kept wearing on the line. The Stormbreaker is more robust and much bigger and stronger compared to the standard clips sold on the market. Most of the people who work with or work for CPA are mostly oyster farmers. The company is actively engaged with farmers all over the world to develop systems that can work in different environments. They not only sit in their office, but go out to the farms and see what's working, what isn't, and what can still be improved. Another project which they currently have in development is a float case for baskets. These baskets will take advantage of the farm's wave and wind action and will help oysters rumble and develop better meat and shell quality. Is there any new oyster technology that we have missed? Let us know in the comment section. We'll see you again in the next video.